Today I want to show you how you can use a piece of rope and a cool knot called a Matthew Walker knot to make a very cool neck rope to use for riding your horse bridleless. I'm Jeff, you're watching Home Built Workshop. Today I'm working on a very high level project at the request of my daughter. So we have to do it. She is very active in horseback riding, competing in different events, and just loves riding around. She has recently taken an interest in bridleless riding, which really just means you don't have all of the normal tack that you would normally have. You just have a rope that goes around the horse's neck. Since it's called a neck rope, you probably can guess we're going to need some rope to make this. Now, this is just some 5 8 double braided rope that I picked up at the hardware store. If you look around online, you'll see a lot of people custom make these using what they're calling yacht rope. Really, I think that's just kind of a fancy name for this double braided stuff. This is a double braided rope. It's very soft, it's very flexible, and it's very durable. It also comes in about a bazillion different colors. You can probably get some at your local hardware store. Mine in particular has it by the foot. I just bought a big old length of it probably enough here to make several of these ropes. We chose this particular pattern here because it's kind of, well, it looks cool. So we are going to use this rope to make our DIY horse neck rope. The biggest thing you're going to need to determine is really what length rope you need for your particular horse. Now the horse that my daughter rides, he's about 16 hands and I've measured this around his neck and we've determined that about a 70 inch rope for him is going to work good. Yours may vary, but I would say the easiest way to figure out the length is to just take your length of rope and wrap it around their neck. And you need to make sure you have enough room to kind of hold on to it like you would a set of reins and go from there. Just measure it up. Based on the research that I've done, I'm finding a range of about 62 to 70, 72 inches based on the size of your horse. Obviously a 70, 72 inch or something larger would be for a much larger horse and anything below 64 down to 60 or below would be for a much smaller horse, maybe even a pony. Measure your particular animal first and try to determine the length. When you're measuring yours, just make sure to test the length. Make sure that you have enough room to sit horseback, whether you're bareback or a saddle, to hold the rope comfortably and you're not choking it against his neck. Today, I'm gonna make a 70 inch neck rope and that's gonna work good for the particular horse that my daughter rides. Since I know that I'm gonna make a 70 inch rope, I have determined that I need to add about 12 inches on either end to allow room for the knot we're going to use and then for a little tassel. We'll end up fraying some of this rope to make a little decorative tassel. So I need a piece of rope that's 94 inches long. Again, 70 inches for the rope plus 12 inches on either end which is 24 inches. Knowing that I need a 94 inch rope, that's going to be a 47 inch length if I double it over. So I'm just going to measure that out. That's gonna be right about there. I'm gonna wrap where I need to cut my rope with a little bit of electrical tape. You don't have to use much, just a wrap or two. Try to wrap it as tight as you can. This is just to help hold the rope together while we cut through that area. You can see that this rope has a center core. That's the inner portion of the double braiding. And now the fun part. We're gonna play with knots. I always have enjoyed different types of knot. I've seen several of these made where people just pull them through like that. And really, there's nothing wrong with that, I don't believe. You wanna make sure you get it pulled really tight and that actually would, that would probably work. But it kinda doesn't look all that great. We're gonna use a different type of knot that I feel looks a lot more finished and more professional than this knot. It's a little bit trickier to tie, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's actually pretty fun. The knot we're gonna use is called a Matthew Walker knot. A Matthew Walker knot? That's an awfully strange name for a knot, so it kinda piqued my curiosity and I got to doing a little investigation. According to the Googles and my buddy Paul, 
Matthew Walker was likely a sailor in the Royal Navy, maybe in the late 1700s, early 1800s, a long time ago anyway. Apparently he had gotten into some trouble with the local law enforcement and was at his trial facing a death sentence. Apparently the judge offered him a pardon if he could produce some sort of a knot that the judge could neither tie nor untie. Enter this knot. Apparently the way this knot was presented was by unraveling the rope, tying this knot in the middle, and then rebraiding the rope so that there's some sort of a mystery knot in the middle. I could see how that would be neither tieable nor untieable. So there's your history lesson for today. Let's get back to our project. I'll show you how to tie this knot so you can make your own horse neck rope. To begin our Matthew Walker knot, it's really important to be able to keep the two strands separate. So I like to hold it up here at the end, that way it doesn't get twisted around and get all messed up. We're gonna begin the knot by taking our left strand, crossing it in front of the right strand, and looping it around behind the other one. I try to kind of hold everything in place with my other hand here. Then this strand is going to loop behind our first strand, cross over in front of everything, and back through this loop. So you can see there's kind of a figure eight going on here. We wanna maintain that figure eight. Don't let it try to untwist or you're gonna have issues. Now we'll take the right strand, pass it behind everything, and it's gonna come right up through this loop right here. And don't let everything untwist on you just yet. Now we take our final strand, which is now the right strand, and pass it through this loop. Now you may be looking at that going, what the heck kind of knot are you showing me? That's not a very professional looking knot. We're not done yet. The cool thing about this knot is that as you work on tightening everything down, getting the strands positioned, while still keeping your strands separated to left and right, not letting them get twisted, we start to pull this tight. You can start to see that this knot makes an X on the front as well as the back, which I think looks really cool. A lot cooler looking knot than just tying these together, which knot looks cooler. Now all we need to do is continue working this knot, tightening it up. This rope does have a little bit of stretch to it, so it takes a little bit of effort to get everything good and tight. We don't want this thing to come loose. We're gonna make sure it doesn't in just a moment, but you wanna try to get it as tight as you can at this point. Now, one thing I wanna point out when we're talking knots, if you're gonna make something like this and you don't wanna use this kind of a knot, that's totally fine. Any knot that's good and secure is probably gonna work just fine. What you don't want to do is use any sort of a knot that can slip. You don't want any kind of a slip knot. Obviously, if it slips, it can tighten around the horse's neck. And, well, that could be disastrous. So, no slip knots. Just any sort of good, secure knot. I like this Matthew Walker knot because I really like the look of it. I think it looks cool. I need to double check my measurements. I want to make sure that I'm at 35 inches with this doubled up. And we are. If you are a little off one way or another, you need to shorten it or make it a little bit longer. You can just work this knot a little bit loose and basically roll the knot down a little bit to get some extra length. And just tighten it back up. With the knot tightened and you've confirmed that the length is correct, now we're going to make sure that this knot absolutely cannot come untied. This is a pretty secure knot and if you've pulled it nice and snug, Chances are it's gonna be just fine and you could use it as it is, but we're gonna take it one step further just to make sure 
a little extra insurance, let's call it, that this thing cannot come undone. I'm gonna take some thin super glue and just let it wick down inside of that knot. I wanna make sure that my ropes don't get twisted as that glue dries, because once it's dry, this thing is not gonna come undone. Not gonna come undone. See what I did there? Now we just need to make the tassel and this thing's ready to ride. We just need to unbraid all of these strands in the rope. This is probably the trickiest part and it's not even all that hard. First we'll remove the tape from the end and you can see how it already starts to fray a little bit. Then using some sort of a sharp instrument, I found it easier to be able to use to work in there and just start to unbraid this rope. You could use your fingers, but I think using some sort of a sharp stick or this metal pick works a little bit easier. This takes a little bit of time, but you just work your way around and unbraid it. Make sure you work all the way around the rope and not just on one side. And once we get a few strands unbraided, you can see that center core. We're going to cut this off once we get this all unbraided. I think that's probably good. This is really the most tedious part is just unbraiding this. Sometimes it wants to get tangled up, but just take your time, go slow. Now we're left with this center core, which as you can see, looks a little strange in there. We're just gonna cut that off and we're done. And now we just kind of give it a little fluffing. So there we have it. Our neck rope is now ready to be handed over to my daughter so she can go on a ride. This is a really fun project, really easy to make for the equestrian in your life or maybe yourself. Now I can see myself making more of these in the future, so I want to share with you a quick little jig that I put together that can help take some of the measurements and save you some time if you're looking to make a bunch of these. What we have here is just a standard 2x4. On one end, I have a dowel. And I've measured out the lengths, and I have another dowel here that I can move based on whatever length I need. Right now I have them marked out at 55, 60, 65, 70, and 75 inches. I can just put the dowel in the size that I need, and then when I double my rope over, I already know where the knot needs to be to have the correct length. And I've also made some marks down here that include the extra 12 inches on either side of the rope so that I can just lay it out here, cut it off to size, and then I already have the correct length. Then when I'm tying my knot, or at least checking the length, I can put this over the dowel and make sure my knot reaches where it needs to reach. And then I know that I have the correct length. So just a little quick thing you can throw together to help you out. If you maybe want to batch some of these out, maybe you want to sell some online or make some for your friends and family, really easy to make jig saves you a bunch of time as well. With that, we're gonna call this project a wrap. This thing has gotta get put to work. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.